Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to do basic configuration of Marlin firmware. This is gonna be great for anyone looking to upgrade or update their firmware from a kit or pre-built machine and anyone that's looking to build from scratch. So pretty much everyone with a 3D printer. Let's get into it. Firstly, before we do anything else, make sure you've watched episode one. In that episode, we covered all the kind of installation of the software and configuring it, getting it all set up and just sorting out the basics. So we're all at kind of a level playing field. And then in this episode, we're gonna jump into actual configuration of the firmware. That video, if you haven't seen it, will be linked in the description and in the cards. So yes, go and watch that if you haven't already. And one other thing before we go any further, I do have to suggest that you disable automatic updating in the background in VS Code. The reason being, when it happened for me, it basically did this weird permission lock read only on a whole bunch of files that it was interacting with, and I couldn't remove, change, delete, or do anything with them, so the whole thing became completely useless. So, long story short, I had to reinstall Windows. So, I don't want you to have to do the same. I would suggest doing the following. If you go to File, Preferences, Settings, application and then in the update section untick enable background updates the pain this will save you is immeasurable so i highly suggest you go and do that before doing anything else right now that that nonsense is all out of the way let's get on with it in some ways you can consider the process of configuration to be quite simple you just simply scroll through the file and enable or disable comments depending on the features that you have input numbers and parameters depending on the size and speeds and stuff of your printer all of these configuration options are clearly presented in two files, being configuration.h and configuration underscore adv.h. The one we're going to be focusing completely on today is config.h, or the basic configuration file. The only real challenge here is attention to detail. These files are quite long and there are quite a few options, but we're gonna go through all of the main options that you'll probably want to look at, and on the way, you can maybe look at tweaking some others yourself. If you're going to be configuring Marlin for a printer that's already widely available, such as the Ender 3s behind me, then you can use a pre-configured or example configuration file to get you started. You can either use it as a update or upgrade to get to the latest version, or if you're going to modify the configuration for a BL Touch or any other modifications or additions, you can do that from that configuration file too. To do this in the config folder, you'll see a readme.md, and in that file, there is a GitHub link. Holding control and clicking the link will download the configuration file. Move the downloaded file and extract it to a working location of your choice. And then from Explorer, not in VS Code, go to config and examples. And then from there, you can find your manufacturer and printer name. Be aware though that this may not be the same name as the seller you bought it from as they can get rebranded. You can copy all the files out of this location and paste them into the Marlin folder of your original firmware overwrite the files when asked. If you want to get clean config files again, these are available from the original Marlin zip file or from the default folder in the downloaded configs. So let's get this back on track for everyone then, regardless of whether you've copied a config from the examples folder or whether you're just using the default one, let's get into that config file. We're looking at configuration.h in this video and we're gonna go through a whole lot and just point out all the major features which you may wanna take a look at. There are others which I'm not gonna talk about but this video is gonna be quite long already, so I think you'll probably agree, this is quite enough to take a look at for now. So let's jump onto the computer and get going with that. So from the top then in the configuration.h file, let's start going down and changing some settings. As I mentioned, I'm not gonna be looking at everything, I'm just gonna to go to the key things that you will probably want to look at. Hopefully I won't miss any. So the first one here is motherboard. So you need to change here where it says board ramps 14 EFB to your specific control board. The list of control boards you can find in under Marlin, SRC, Core, and Boards.h. You can double click it to pin it to the top or just single click to open a new tab. From here, I would recommend either using information provided by your manufacturer or just doing a control F to search. Like before, I'm gonna search for GTR underscore and I can find board underscore BTT GTR version 1.0. So I'm gonna copy this lot here and paste it back in the main file in configuration.h. I can now close that boards.h file. I don't need to change anything in there, I just need that value from it. Immediately under motherboard, you can find a custom machine name. So we need to uncomment that by removing the two slashes. This is if you want a custom machine name, and we'll put a machine name in here. I'm going to call it formbart upgrade. 
Scooting just a little bit further down, we can define the number of extruders we're going to use. This needs to be a whole number between one and eight. So in this case, I'm just using one. Just below that, we have our filament diameter value. So this is the nominal size of the filament. You don't need to measure anything. If you're using stuff that should be 1.75, then you stick in 1.75. Again, your options are listed above if you're not sure what to be picking. Now we're going to jump a little bit down to around line 400 as we're going to skip over the multiplexer and multi extruder options as I'm just using a single extruder. These are also quite complicated and this video is quite long already so we're not going to get in that too much detail but if you do have a multiplexing system then this area is where you can define the parameters that you need for that. Next we're going to look at the thermal settings so these are all the different types of thermistors basically heat measuring devices that you can have in your printer and you need to be able to find each of the ones that you have enabled. If you're not using, say, one to seven, then you don't need to define them, you can leave those at zero, but anything that you are going to be using needs to be defined. To determine which value you need to put in this white section here, you need to be able to reference this table above that basically gives you a large list of all the different types of measuring devices that you could be using. The number on the far left is the number that you'll need to input below. I'm going to be using a value of five for the hot end, which is the value provided by E3D for the Hamira hot end. And also I'm going to be using 11 for the bed, which is the correct one for the Kinovo heated bed that I'm going to be using. If you're not sure what kind of temperature device you are using, then you need to check with your manufacturer or reseller or wherever you bought it from. So you know exactly what type of heat measuring device you have. Moving just a little bit further down, we find min temp and max temp. Mintemp you'll find you need to set if you're operating in a particularly cold environment. If you're at standard room temperatures, then there's probably no need to worry about it. Max temp, however, you will need to understand the composition of your hot end. What is the maximum safe temperature it can operate at? If it's like 500 degrees, then you can put 500. But if it's like a PTFE lined hot end, you will need to set it much lower than that. Likewise, for the bed, you need to input the number which is most appropriate for the design of your bed. For my configuration, I'm going to be setting the first line for my extruder to 285. For all the others, I'm just going to insert zero for now. And lastly, for the bed, I'm going to stick that at 140. Next up, we have PID settings. So this is the control system to turn your heaters on and off to get the right temperature. You will need to do a tuning loop to be able to get this right. And we can add a helpful menu item to assist us with doing that. You can do it all via kind of G codes manually, but it's nice to have that menu option there too. Just below that, we have the actual KP, KI, and KD values themselves. There are a number of different kind of preset values you can use by on commenting if that's helpful for you. But largely, you'll need to put in some initial values, which you can get from your manufacturer or reseller or something like that. And then you can update these by doing the PID auto tune cycle and then modify these using the menu items that we've placed in above. The values I'm going to start off with are those suggested by E3D on their page for the him mirror and then once I've got this thing up and running as I said I'll do the actual tune itself and we'll refine the values next up just after line 500 we can define whether we're going to use PID or bang bang for our bed if it's a thin bed that you're using that's quite small and maybe changes temperature quite quickly you may want to use PID just make sure the SSR that you use if you're using one can handle that for me, my bed is going to be very large and changes temperature very slowly. So a much more basic control system, which is called bang bang, which basically means it could be on or off, is going to be sufficient for me. So I don't need to enable PID and it will, as a default, use bang bang. Just below that, we have the setting for maximum bed power. If you have a heater that's too powerful for your bed and it's causing the bed to warp permanently, then you can change this down from 255 to basically limit the effective bed power. If you are going to use PID as the control system for the bed, then you will need to set the KP, KI and KD values much like you will with the hot end. And again, you can run a tuning cycle to identify what those values are. One quick note as we're passing by it, thermal runaway protection, do not change this. Always leave this enabled. The next thing we're looking at is some end stop settings. Here you can determine which ones you have enabled or disabled. If they're obviously in color here, then they're enabled. If they're commented, they're disabled. In my case, I need X minimum, Z minimum, and Y maximum. So I need to comment this one to disable it and uncomment this one to enable it. In addition to determining the position of the end stops, you also need to determine their logic. So if your end stops are reading on when they should be off or off when they should be on, 
then you can change this between false and true to invert the logic of the end stop. Next, we can configure the stepper drivers. So by default, these are all set to A4998 and commented out. I'm going to enable the ones which I know are going to be active. And then I can simply copy and paste from the array above for the type of stepper driver that I'm going to be using. Simple as that. As you go, don't forget to save your file. You can either do this with Control S or just going to File, Save. Right here on line 733, we have the steps per millimeter. So, well, it's actually steps per unit, but the units we're using is millimeters. This is the number of steps required to like pulse the motor in order to move one millimeter. So in order to get the correct values for this, you'll need to do a couple of calculations. You need to do the motor steps per revolution, so 200 times the driver micro stepping, which is 256, and then divide that by the belt pitch multiplied by the pulley teeth count. In my case, that gives me 1,280 steps per millimeter. So I need to put that into here. And the exact same configuration is used on the Y axis. So I shall put that in there. For the Z, it's a slightly different calculation. It's the motor step per revolution times by the driver micro stepping, all divided by the screw pitch. So that gives me 12,800 steps per millimeter. So I need to put that in here. For the extruder steps per millimeter, it's not something you can very easily calculate. So what we'll do is start with a theoretical value, which is what E3D provide. In this case, it's 409, but that's for 1 16th micro stepping. So we need to multiply that for by 16 for the 256 micro stepping, and that gives us 6,544. It's worth noting here that I've configured my 256 micro steps to be done without interpolation. If you are going to use interpolation, you can configure your steps per millimeter using 1 16th micro stepping, and the control board will interpolate up to 256. In order to use the values that I've configured here, I do actually need to do further configuration in the pins.h file and configuration underscore ADV or advanced.h file. So if you are going to work like this, make sure that you do those changes too. Those changes will be covered in another video. Moving on, we get down to the maximum feed rate, which is basically the maximum speed. There is a correct way to calculate this based on your supply voltage and your stepper motor type and specifications and all those sorts of things. For now, we're just going to leave it as it is because it gets a little bit complicated. But if you do want to know exactly what that is, I do have a separate video on that. Moving down just a little bit, we find the default maximum acceleration. So this is the peak acceleration that you set per axis. And if we move down a little bit more, you can actually set a default acceleration for different types of movements. So your default for printing moves, your default for retraction acceleration and travel acceleration. So there's a whole bunch of different acceleration settings you can change depending on the different axis and the type of moves that are being executed. We're going to jump down quite a little bit further now, approximately to line 800 and a bit, where we get to our Z probe options. In some instances, you may just use a typical end stop like you do for X and Y, and then you use the adjustability in your bed for leveling to set your kind of Z height. But in many cases, you might want to use things like inductive probes, capacitive probes, BL touch, and other stuff like that. So this is the segment where you can define that. Depending on the control board you have, will depend on how you plug in that probe. In some cases, you'll plug it into a specific like BL touch point on the board, but in many cases, you will need to use the standard Z end stop pins, so that's what this option is for. This section on Z probes is quite long, but there are plenty of comments to help you. If we get to here, we find BL touch. I'm going to enable BL touch by removing the comment. One of the most important configuration options for probes is defining their position, and you do that around here. So this basic diagram indicates how you're supposed to set up what the position is. The probe for my printer is positioned directly to the right-hand side of the nozzle. So that means the Y offset, so towards the front to back, is zero. So we can set that one to zero. And the offset to the right of the nozzle, so from here to here, is 62 millimeters, so we can set that one at plus 62. In Z, I don't know what it is yet, so I'm just going to leave it at zero. Moving down approximately 30 lines or so, we can also set the end stop direction. So this is the direction at which it's going to move to in order to do the homing. So we're going to home to X minimum, so that will be towards zero, but we're going to be homing to Y maximum, so that needs to be set to one, and also Z to minimum. 
Next we have bed size, it's very clearly just below. For me, it's a 400 by 400 millimeter bed, so that was very easy. Next we have the travel limits. This indicates how far you can move in each direction. So if you want to set your home position or your zero zero to be on the corner of the bed, you can change your X min so it's homing to say minus 30. So your nozzle will identify the corner of the bed as zero just by homing a little bit past that. And then you can set your maximum sizes just below and the Z max, so this is your maximum height you can print to. And in my case, it's 400 again. Moving down a little bit further, we find the filament runout sensor at approximately 11.44. So if you want to enable a filament runout sensor, which we do in this case, we can enable that. If you need to invert the logic for the end stop triggering, which is basically what the runout sensor is, then you can switch that to true or false. And you can also define what actually happens when the filament runout sensor gets triggered. So in this case, it's going to run an M600 command. Next, we have bed leveling starting around 11.67. And there are a lot of options here, so make sure you're reading the comments in detail to understand what sort of leveling you're going for. There are multiple different types. I can personally recommend unified bed leveling. It's the recommended one. And to enable that, you can just uncomment the line here. Below here, there are quite a few configuration options which you need to look into, depending on the type of bed leveling that you're going for. You want to look in the conditional, so if any of these, so if you're using or have enabled any of those, then you need to make sure that you're looking at the settings below that in order to configure them for your printer. When it's dark like this, it means you don't need to look at it because it's not going to be triggered. So again, no need to configure here, for example, but unified bed leveling, more details there. Jumping quite a bit further down now, approximately to lines 1400 and a bit, we go to the additional features. So for EEPROM, this is a really useful setting to be able to modify a number of features of the printer. So if you want to change the steps per millimeter or something, it's very easy to do that using EEPROM as it stores additional values on top of the firmware and uses those as a priority. So we're going to enable EEPROM and that means we can use that setting. It's very easy to enable. Also in the additional settings, we have LCD configuration. Again, that's a very large segment of the configuration files here, and it does really get quite complicated. There's a lot of stuff in here, but you basically want to do a kind of control F, look for the type of screen that you have, make sure you enable the right one. If you want to change uh, encoder directions and amounts, then that's where you can do this as well. The SD card enabling is also done in this area. So again, just do a search and you'll be able to find exactly what you need. You can see there are many, many different types of uh, visual graphic controllers that you may want to be using. And the last thing we're going to look at is RGB LEDs. So if you're using something like maybe NeoPixels, then you can configure what they do here. So again, remove the two slashes to enable that segment. When it refreshes, there you go, that's now enabled. And there is a number of different configurations you can do here depending on what you want them to do. So we've done quite a good chunk of the Marlin configuration there. We've not covered everything and we've obviously not touched the advanced configuration, but in terms of the basic things, we've covered a huge range and that should be enough to get you started, if not all of the way with a lot of configuration on many machines. In the next episode, we're gonna take a look at the advanced configuration. So for example, as I mentioned with the TMC2209 stepper drivers, and using the full 256 micro step without interpolation, we do have some advanced configuration options we do need to take a look at. So, as I mentioned, that will be in the next episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe to make sure you get notified that of that if that's something you're interested in. In fact, give a like anyway if you've got this far in the video. This is probably the kind of thing that you're into, <laughs> even if you wanted to be or not. So, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.